Lumen Pro. Is, What's in it? Um, so it has a, a mix of um, NAD, so that's the nicotinamide and adenosine dihydrophosphate, yeah. I think, something like that. Um, and then they've also added, alongside the NAD, I'm just um, seeing if I've got that here, uh, something else. And it's not something I've used because it's in the States, not here. But it was something I came across as something that was natural, low risk. They felt it was effective in reversing cataracts, um, containing the antioxidants. Um, it's got some uh, proteins in there too. Um, and it's obviously cost effective. It's not going to cost you anywhere yeah, near what it's going to cost as far as an operation. Yeah. Why? Well, what does the operation so, cost? Um, I think currently it's around about 1800 to 2000 pounds. Ooh, and is there any risk to the dog? Uh, so there is a risk of uveitis. So that's an inflammation following the operation. Um, and uh, remember these prices may have gone up in uh, recent times. It's been a while since I've had to send a dog for a cataract operation. So that's a good thing. Good thing. It yeah. is a good thing. Yeah. And I would definitely say, you know, first things first, you know, keep up the antioxidants in the system keep up things like the essential fatty acids especially the omega-3s you know they're all yeah. great for healing process um in those circumstances yeah the uh there's a genetic uh, uh kind of predisposition for these cataracts in dogs why do you think that is um afghan hounds bichons boston terriers german shepherds gold retrievers lab retrievers cocker spaniels um what do you think is the genetic reason for getting cataracts? Um, look, I think there's genetic predisposition, okay? And that can be that the function isn't quite right. And there, we, we've talked so much about epigenetics and the effects of the microbiome, the effects of the environment, you know, all of the changes in the chemicals that are exposed to, that's extra oxidative stress. You know, yeah. the levels of processed foods that they're um, being challenged with, all of those add to the epigenetic predisposition to cellular damage. And what better place to see that in person than in your eyes? OK, yeah. because, you know, people can look in deeper to those tissues. These are, you know, cells in action doing stuff that you really want to make sure. So from retinopathy, so that's an effect on the retina of the eye all the way through to um, the lens and the conjunctiva um, and the cornea, you know, all yeah. of those tissues, we can literally see deep into the body as to what's going on. Um, and any damage that's occurring is quite readily available and, and visible. And the, the issue is that the dog will or cat will be affected by that. Yeah. There's people, uh, iridologists, have you heard of an iridologist? So that's slightly different because that's looking at damage to the iris yeah and how the iris changes yeah okay uh, to they feel depict underlying biological disease yeah. okay yeah. and so and they that, will say oh this looks like a renal pattern this looks like a liver yeah. pattern you know a, i know a girl thing. i know a girl very very reputable who couldn't believe that she's ended up doing it she's like she's like very very busy with it and she says i'm telling you like she uses a lot and and then um you know kind of uh, traditional chinese medicine stuff would have seen a lot in the mm -hmm. eye as well they would have spent mm -hmm. a lot of time i'm sure there is something to it because of the sheer yeah. amount of people that she goes through and helps and that kind of stuff so it's like things pop up in the eye you know listen if your bile duct isn't working or your liver is sick you'll see it in the eye straight away if you're, you're hung over you know so there's all sorts of uh there's also you can see you can see um, it in the eyes. do you go yellow <laughs> uh, yeah, not yet. Not yet. Definitely not January. I haven't done it in um, three weeks. But, uh, I've got some bits here. Okay, so like the, the, some of the some of the more. Um, let's just talk about uh, dry food. Okay, you're saying dry fed dogs get it a lot, and we know dry fed dogs are far more prone to inflammation for whatever reason. Insert issue. You know, there's just so many things wrong uh, that can cause inflammation in dry fed dogs, and jumping to raw decreases inflammation. So you're saying decreases cataracts. I still fall with gathering of toxins in the eye. I'm, it's going to be hard to shake that. But uh, the two really important B uh, vitamins are B2 and B3 in this process, apparently in cataracts. 
And there's, I'm sure if you looked at any vitamin, it's important. Any, any of the antioxidants, C and E as well, they're important too. But anyway, let's go with this one. Uh, vitamin B2, riboflavin, and B3 is uh, niacin. Uh, uh, are needed to protect glutathione and it's a really important antioxidant in the eye and when I was reading these eye society places they were saying that of all of them vitamin B2 is the most important uh, mm. and uh, there's a study here by Hoffman La Roche who found that after just six months of storage dry food B1 fell by 57 percent B2 fell by 32 percent and I'm thinking if you're feeding dry B12 fell by 34%. Uh, in canned dog food, B6 loss was 89% in canned dog food loss. So, um, you know, it's just another thing to consider that if you're feeding a, a dry food that may not be very replete with B vitamins, uh, certainly with storage over time, especially if the stress shelf life testing showed that those results are even worse over just six weeks. So a nice warm shelf or a hot cargo ship or whatever. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Then I started thinking about so food sources for B vitamins. What are the best? And you probably know this already. And I'm sure we talked about it when we mentioned brewer's yeast last time. But I, my mind always goes to brewer's yeast. And I think brewer's yeast is a great source of B vitamins. But I saw someone did a great article comparing brewer's yeast and nutritional yeast, which is the stuff that, I don't know if you know your nutritional yeast, but if you ever spend time as a vegetarian, you'll know what it is. It's like flakes of deliciousness. It's quite tasty. It tastes like a like a light kind of crisp nearly. But it's, it's, not, it's not like Marmite, is it? You love it or you hate it. It might be a little. Yeah, you, <laughs> you wouldn't be eating it by a teaspoon, you know. But it's dry flaky stuff. Like you're almost going to make porridge out of it, but it's dry and flaky, mm -hmm. kind of nutty kind of flavor too. And people dust their salads with it and make things taste nice. But uh, that nutritional yeast absolutely blows brewer's yeast out of the water when it comes to B vitamins. Listen to the comparison here for whatever uh, unit. I don't know what it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, MCG, is it micrograms? It could be. It doesn't even say that. I'm sure it does say it somewhere. Below is a 15 grams of oxo. It's a mm -hmm. teaspoon. Uh, time, it's got seven times more time in nine milligrams instead of 1.2 milligrams in brewer's yeast. Nine milligrams of riboflavin instead of 1.5 in brewer's yeast. 55 milligrams of niacin, only 10 milligrams in brewer's yeast, on and on and on. 9.6 milligrams of B6, only 0.8 in, in brewer's yeast. Folate, it's got seven times more. Uh, B12, it's got almost 50 times more. Uh, it's just uh, every single nutrient, it bars some of the uh, minerals down there. So I just thought, if you're looking for B vitamins... Uh -huh. And so yeah. tell me again, the B12 in B nutritional yeast? B12 in nutritional yeast is 7.8 micrograms, and the B12 in brewer's yeast is nearly non-existent, not 0.3 yeah. micrograms. It doesn't exist. I mean, 7.8 micrograms is pretty much nothing as well, but it's 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 uh, a it's lot. It's a bit of a genetic more. processing boost, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. old yeast. What's, what is it with the old yeast that it can't produce that B12 unlike bacteria? That's right. Brewer's yeast can't, but it is nutritional yeast, but it's so small that it's 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 nearly irrelevant. But I am surprised that is actually nutritional yeast. because It must not be them. necessary for those levels of um, organisms to need the levels of B12. Yeah. The bacteria and all of the organisms beyond that yes, need. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's just really interesting that that's... Interesting. Um, it must have been a developmental change in... Yeah. Yeah, evolution. A little quirk. So, like, so this B vitamins is interesting. So, if I had an older dog, okay, so you're thinking, okay, B vitamins, particularly if I'm a dry fed dog, I would be offering him nutritional yeast or brewer's yeast on the side, see if he wants it, dry or paste form, because sometimes they don't want it dry. But the other low hanging fruit for these things is vitamin C, studies show, very, very beneficial for eyes. And if you don't have enough vitamin C, you will lose visual acuity and all sorts of stuff. Vitamin E, which is the antioxidant, Brand's talking about antioxidants, essential fatty acids, which Bren has mentioned already, zinc, which is really, really important uh, for vitamin A, apparently, uh, from the liver uh, to do something in the eyes. So, and the last one that we've heard That's of before, carotenoids that's the ah. uh build your vitamin a and that's for the action in the rods and cones at the back of the eye for oh, the actual cool. part of the retina that detects light oh, so very good. that's a really important part of um the eye processing you, na you nailed it a protective for protective pigment in the eyes uh, and the, the other two that we've mentioned now and again are lutein and zeaxanthin and this is kind of topical because i was um someone came on the page today i was they said oh dogs don't need plant matter and I said, look they don't need plant matter and they definitely take meat any chance they can get but you know we don't have any studies showing dogs don't eat plant matter we've only got studies showing they either a little bit or a bit more um but uh, the, the two examples I threw out this morning before I noticed this was lutein and zeaxanthin. 
the only real source of lutein and zeaxanthin, which are two compounds that the eyes are better greatly from. You really only get them from plants, particularly lutein only comes from plants. Zeaxanthin, you may find a little bit in egg yolk, but outside that, it's it's all plant based as well. So they're two very planty compounds. And so the only place your carnivore, particularly your cats, are going to get lutein and zeaxanthin are eating eyes. And so that's why things like sardines and little sprats and stuff where you put in eyes and brains are a cool little source of these little compounds. And dogs and cats are particularly sensitive to these compounds. So they don't they only need a fraction of the CBD we need. So they need it like we do. They've got the same endocannabinoid system, but they're used to harvesting tiny bits of this from the prey. And so the, we need to eat more of it. We're just maybe we're just used to eating more of it. But isn't it interesting that lutein zeaxanthin, that's up the top of the list when it comes to supplements for eyes. So I'd be thinking for older dogs, I'm thinking, right, listen, you're thinking with your B vitamins for nutritional yeast. Is he getting enough vitamin C in his diet? Do raw fed, raw fed dogs almost certainly. Vitamin E, which is your wheat germ oil, guys, is fantastic. You just put a drop to the side of the bowl, the dog will eat it. He'll love it. Essential fatty acids, raw fed dogs don't need to worry about that, but you can always boost with, uh, with fish oil. And then zinc, lutein, zeaxanthin, that's your dark greens, your leafy veg, um, you know, tiny little bit of that lightly steamed uh, in the diet might be very beneficial for older dogs. But I have one more, okay? So this is where I wanted to, to, to push this new product. And I thought, okay, no, nothing to do with me, by the way. I just found it and I thought it was cool. I, I came across this cool study. Brian, have you got that picture of those dogs? Yeah, I have um, indeed. So let's see if we can enlarge that a little bit. Yeah. Tell you what. Get rid of us. No need for us. So um, this is a, a, a little compound, okay? The compound is called lanosterol. It, it exists naturally in the skin. And uh, it's, it's, the, it's what gives your skin its oiliness. And these amazing scientists thought, uh, these uh, Chinese scientists, uh, recently enough this is, uh, started messing around with um, lanosterol, which is like lanolin, and they wanted to see if it helped with eyes. What they kind of accidentally found initially was that it prevents the clumping of proteins and uh, particles in the human eye. They tested it, first of all, in a Petri dish, uh, and it, it crystalline clumps is what they say is the is the fault for these cataracts. And they found that it, it clumped them together. It, it got, um, what do they say? And indeed, after adding lanosterol to the mix, the protein aggregates dissipated. So that sounds good. Zhang's team suspects uh, that it breaks apart the clumps that are responsible for the cataracts. Buoyed by this result, the team tested whether eye drops of lanosterol would clear up age-related cataracts in dogs over the course of just six weeks. A trained examiner then looked at the eye before and after a picture of the eyes. We saw an increase in the lens transparency and also decreased cloudiness of the cataract. Uh, so I found the study, and I'll share the study later on from the from the Facebook page. But look at those results. They're yeah. pretty. You don't have to be an eye specialist to see. I mean, look at that one in the middle top. I mean, bloody hell. Uh, all, mm -hmm. the, all the middle ones are particularly impressive. And clearly, the controls are not changing at all. You use the controls to show that the compound you're adding. So uh, this is a kind of a new addition. So I was thinking, great, lanosterol. This is fantastic. And then I'm thinking, what other cool compounds are out there? And carnosine leapt off the page. So there's a few studies to show that carnosine, which is only found in meat, so vegetarians and vegans don't get any carnosine in their diet at all. Um, so carnosine is great. And there's a couple of studies to show that carnosine is, is, is important for eye health. And one more, which is uh, chrysanthemum. Oh, that's a tough one. Chris, Chris, uh, yeah, why not? Chrysanthemum. <laughs> and uh, so chrysanthemum is, um, <laughs> is, is has been used for eons over in Asia, particularly China. So they're all over this, and they knew that this was the one for eye health. And uh, recently, people started looking into this, and they take apart chrysanthemum and they try to find the compound that's most effective from the plant, which is often the ruin of it, because it's usually the whole thing is the most effective thing. But they're trying to find something they can take apart and sell. And they have this new compound, diastin, E-I-O, they're calling it, dial. And uh, the results of using dial in lots of different types of issues that result in blindness are impressive. Now, a lot of those studies could be choose by the people that just found this compound because they've got the patent there for 20 years, whatever. Point is, chrysanthemum, carnosine, and this lanosterol, the last one particularly, lanosterol, has the most kind of um, hope for me. So I just go Googling lanosterol for pets. And I land on a product. I'm nothing to do with this product, guys. Good good luck to them. Um, did I, I didn't send you that picture, Brent, did I not? Um, uh, oh, here, hang on there a second. You can send it now and I'll post it. Yeah, let's see how quick you are. 
Um, so <laughs> I, uh, there we go. This is only this product is only ten quid. So they could have said they could have put forty quid on that, and I would have believed it. So that product um, is is only ten euro, and in my opinion hit these three things like i've just happened to be looking for particularly lanosterol but then i look at carnosine chrysanthemum a couple of other bits and pieces and this very natural looking eye ointment that just says it's for eye health because you have to be careful of the claims you make when you're selling this sort of stuff has all those bits and pieces now i have no idea where that product came from it could be from places you don't want to buy products from or whatever but it just shows that there is products out there like that and i wonder like if the if the study shows those sort of benefits surely if we were to say we pick up three by the way guys again i've no idea the quality of that product it just contains all three ingredients that i've been talking about because of the studies that were supporting it um so i was thinking surely uh what i would like to do bren is i would like to buy four or five of these okay and then we will give them out to um anybody in patreon she's dogs with dogs with cataracts so we'll we'll plunder patreon people there's whatever there's you know we've 500 people there i'm sure a thousand people mm -hmm. so we'll put it out to patreon first and if you got if your dogs have any uh, cataracts those studies always highlight that it needs to be done early enough for very late stage cataracts you know you're not touching the size of it but for yeah early, please yeah. if your dog already looks like this yeah i think that's a little late or a little man look at that yeah. um uh so yeah so i'm thinking let's 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 buy five of these i mean they're only a tenner it's so cheap buy we buy five of these products we'll find the best version of them we can uh go find five dogs with bad cataracts and let's just put them to the test people can just take photographs is it available any... available in europe or available in it was, UK? A, it was a euro price on it so uh and it was actually okay. it was actually from a website called frugo which i don't like the sound of f-r-u-u-g-o dot i-e uh but it's 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 an irish website with the... Uh, it's the dot ie that i can't get <laughs> yeah never trust them. <laughs> don't trust them and is there any tips for people if we put this out to five of the worst cataract or you know medium uh, cataract doggies that we have out there is there any tips for taking a picture like do you say like look at this picture of the dog how do you do yeah, that so it's it's really interesting isn't it because um what you've got to do is get an appropriate amount of light going into the front of the eye for you to see the level of reflection and refraction okay. of light. Now, the difference in those two. These, so reflection is just light coming back at you off the surface of the eye, any moist area, anything with a um, light behind it. Refraction is when the light changes direction and creates an opacity because the light is not di directly passing back to you from the retina. Okay. And so you've got to be careful in this situation that if you've got a lot of diffuse light at the front of the dog, you won't be able to differentiate between nuclear sclerosis and cataract. Okay. Whereas if you've got a very focal flash coming from close to the lens, of your camera pointing at the dog's eye that's the one that should pick up if it's a true cataract you'll get still a lot of blue coming back at you or you'll get a lot of um you know you'll go straight through to the retina and you'll get a colored retina coming back at you so a very green reflection um sometimes very red reflection and that's you know actually the light reflecting off the retina back okay. at you so, so that's flash. nuclear sclerosis so you need a flash so you need to darken the room yeah you know maybe even focus on the you know where the dog's eye is um with a red light so that the, the camera works a little bit and so i wouldn't say pitch black because the camera will really really struggle yeah you need to force the flash yeah. on your camera yeah. okay and then you need to take that picture and the flash needs to be close to the lens. So with many mobile phones, that's fine because it's right next to the, the lens. And what you want to try and do is to, if your camera allows it, is to force an immediate flash, not to give you the red eye flash. So you need to turn off red eye because red eye does the flash first to close your pupil to stop the red eye. Okay. So that when you next take the picture, so you won't be able to see the lens because the cool. two flashes immediately allow the closing down of the iris. So you need to have a forced flash 
that's pretty instantaneous at the time of taking the picture. Yeah. That so turn off red eye yeah. and take a flash photography in dimmed light. And hold a treat maybe just on behind the phone or like that dog is clearly staring at something very intently. I mean, even if he can't see, he knows his bloody food there. There is something there that I want. Um, yeah, okay, so that's cool. So look, we could we could easily harvest a few pictures just to see and get some ideas of uh, some cases out there. So somebody was asking, how long would you use this for? Those results that you're looking there, um, from these scientists spent six weeks doing that, and they were administering it twice a day. So six weeks for twice a day, that was pure lanosterol. This product contains lanosterol and a few other bits and pieces. I think Mac is in there as well, but um, mm. so but it's it's definitely got the chrysanthemum uh, and something else. So you know, I think I'm excited. You just give it a go. I, I, unless the dog's bumping into things, I'd be giving that a go before I'd have to do major surgery on the dog. Sure. Would, yeah, would absolutely. And wouldn't that be interesting to go um, alongside the N acetyl carnosine um, and the antioxidants and the NAD plus in the Lumen Pro and see which of those two Ooh. work work well. Oh yeah, we so, should just, just run the two products beside each other. Just yeah. five dogs. And eat. We need oh, to yeah. we need to be able to get hold of that American product. I wonder how we can do that. Oh, there'll be somebody making that in Europe. Somebody's mimic them straight away. You know, unless any of the compounds are under patent, someone copies them straight away. You'll see. Yeah. There'll be yeah, somebody, yeah. somebody in the UK probably. Somebody listening to us tonight ripping yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Send, send us, we'll take your ripped off merchandise. <laughs> you know? I'm just bowled off that these products is like, listen, who knows? Maybe it doesn't work, you know, but you know, that they exist for 10 euros. Well, and the like, photos seem to say it works, but how, you know, how many is that just four cases? Yeah. And uh, six. You know. Yeah. But yeah, the, um, yeah. And, but uh, yeah, there was also a few others like the chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum uh, studies are, are the soon possible. <laughs> Diox, it's I, I, I'd love to follow you around a, um, you know, nursery a plant store yeah, and no, see can't. whether you could say all of them. Can't do it. Can't do it. Why do they make it so difficult? But the compound <laughs> diosmetin, I like the sound of that dial. That's the dial they say is one of the compounds in uh, chrysanthemum and uh, it's doing the job. Protecting an injured retina is where it's strongest. So uh, cool. Loving this because usually when people talk about eye products, they talk about eye bright, golden seal, that kind of stuff. But I can't imagine that does anything for cataracts really. It's a, it's a specific issue, you know? Mm. so um yeah. so that's kind of cool it's 1954 bren i mean we don't even have time oh, for patreon wow. here i have to get down to the kids in about two minutes but uh, yeah. anything else left to say about cataracts do you think um i think uh, so there's a couple of questions come up on the side so can we administer uh human nad supplements to dogs yes you can i have done in a few cases uh their metabolic pathways work the same uh just you start to waste the product if you go beyond probably a half dose um, of what's on the label for a human. Uh, so I'd just say, just, you know, don't go overboard with thinking you're going to give them the human dose um, and a capsule twice daily or anything like that. Um, uh, and so giving them oral medication may be as useful as giving them the eye drops, um, but there is very little testing, especially on cataracts. Um, so other than for the actual eye drops so uh, do look at lumen pro if you want to know more about that topical there is a website for the us uh, and i'd love to hear from you guys if anybody's used it so cool. have a look people want to know where to send these pictures i haven't thought about that do you want to just dm us on facebook would that be easiest direct message us the pictures on facebook yeah or they'll, break, they'll break down well the i mean in, or or initially you know what people are going to be on patreon so I'll be able to that. post that's better. I'll be able yeah. to messages on that. That'll keep the quality up. That'll be yeah. better. Yeah, let's do that. Just messages on Patreon and send the send the image there. Uh, and Bren's gonna go try find that other product in the US or possibly in yeah. the EU. And uh, Caroline Caroline Ships is suggesting that I mean the other product is a lot more expensive, but I tell you what. Three pound fifty. Three for your... oh three fifty. <laughs> Lads, it can't be there for three fifty, is it? There's, I'm getting worried. Well, That's the thing that I'm looking at though. It, it does just talk about dry itchy eyes. It's not particularly saying cataracts, is it? No, it's, it's not really at all. Interesting. It just found exactly those. Oh, the dogs are scaring the light out of me. He kind of jumps, <laughs> he jumps in his sleep and he panics. Um, so uh, yeah, but like I mean, uh, I just typed in lanosterol and those other two ingredients came up straight away in that product. And I was thinking, well, what are the chances that they're reading the exact same thing I am? 
Uh, but if it's there for three, there's a you know reassuring the expensive. I mean, there's a reason when you see something with a price tag, it's like fifty yeah. euro. That must be very good for me. Oh, I feel great yeah. after taking that. Um, <laughs> the Lumen pounds. Pro is about fifty dollars. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, I was blind, and now I can see. <laughs> you know, but then you know to reduce a cataract with a couple of bottles, so a hundred dollars worth. Compared yeah. to two thousand dollars for a cataract uh, yeah. operation, mm-hmm. you know, I'm rolling that dice, you know. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I rolled the three pound fifty dice first. <laughs> 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 I love them all, but come on. Um, would it work for dry eye and dogs? What's dry eye and dogs like? Why why are your dogs getting dry? Eyes? Well, that's What's an immune mediated condition, isn't it? So that is the attack of the body on the tear production cells. Yeah. And therefore, you're not producing enough tears. So again, depending on the function of work, there is no reason why it shouldn't. Um, but who knows? Uh, I don't think there's been enough testing out there. I think otherwise we'd all be using it, wouldn't we? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Uh, you know, sometimes when things really work, like those, uh, like that, uh, the, the, the um, bacteria vaccines that Nick was talking about there last week, you know, sometimes, sometimes I think when some things are really effective, like vitamin D, and they're simple and cheap, we don't talk about it for some reason, you know. So mm. I think uh, there is there's definitely very effective cures out there. It's just trying to. Are find you thinking a load of eye doctors are going? But I want to keep doing my cataract. <laughs> yeah, I love two thousand dollars. What am I going to do? I don't have eyes to work on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to spell, spend three pound fifty on some eye drops for yeah. somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just made twenty five e off that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to sell a lot of that to make my money yeah. back on a two thousand. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, that's a, oh that's, the suspicion. <laughs> it's not my business to keep up from all of this in business. <laughs> Why is there so many big words tonight? Bloody, I'm tired. I was up very early this morning. Uh, well, that. Nick's yeah, going to be happy sleep. that uh, you know he didn't have to take care of yeah. uh, tonight's fiasco. So. Yeah, he'll be yeah he'll be happy that we made a hames of it at the start as well. Thanks very much for yeah, bearing yeah. with us, guys. I can see that lots of people came in on YouTube, and uh, we'll post yeah. the video. We'll take it from YouTube and we'll post it up on Facebook as well for people that missed it. So uh, thanks very much for that, Brian. You feel that all that I I came very unprepared yeah. for that conversation. <laughs> but uh, if you're on, if you're on Patreon, guys, again, uh, send us your cataract pictures, and uh, we'll pick a few, and we're gonna at least run the cheap product and if we can find this better uh, product that's our, our alternative product we might run a few of them too so uh, and, and your wonderful assistant uh, is going to be probably posting on patreon with a picture of the product and a oh, cool. uh you know this is the, yeah okay cool. yeah, yeah. This, is, this is the uh this is the product you're talking about have you tr- have you tried no, no, i think your product oh I my own okay, if you yeah. could yeah so, so that there's a post to reply to and yeah okay cool know. good idea let's do that all right cool thanks brian Appreciate that. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.